All right, this tree pear broke off, landed up on the house there earlier today. Yesterday, actually. Just took that off of there. I missed that part of the action. The boys had all the fun without me. But it's hard back leaning now. Let's take a look at it. It's back leaning right up into this pine here. And it's leaning, if it's, got, it's also leaning out a little bit away there, away from the house. Got all this open field out here. Got the skid loader. A couple things to keep in mind here. Uh, number one, rather than isolating the pole line, we just set the pole line up there. And it's not through, through a tight crotch, it's just through that little branch, but it's, it's, it's gonna be, um, it's basically you know, encircling the whole top of the tree. So we don't have to worry about like pulling on one of these uh, pear limbs that are very weakly attached. We could pull that off and, and break that. So better to have the, the tree back out of the rope basket hitched around the trunk there. Uh, just watch that basket bat, badminton net, Mike. Just make sure you're good on that. Anyhow, so, and it doubles the pull, on, it doubles the pull, basically, or it actually doesn't double the pull. It puts half the force that's going to be necessary to take this tree over on each end of the line, minus a little friction. So this, this rope was an extraneous rope they were using to get the other broken piece down. That's really, it's not, 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 it's really a, not, nothing at all. It's not involved with the, this operation at this point, except getting in our way. Anyhow, uh, the second thing for, for dropping this tree is it's going to be a lot easier to take the tree to against the, against the lean, which the back way, we're, we're basically taking almost 180 degrees to the lean. And so that's better than trying to pull it uh, sideways. Like one of the guys thought it would be good to take it over here, but that's going sideways. We've got this pine tree in the way. Those trees, there wasn't a lot of room out there. So I thought, yeah, let's just put this tree on the ground right against the lean. And we got a lot of pull there. Here we go, Mike, a little bit. Now he's, he's pulling back as I'm looking up. Come on, a little more. I want to see this tree starting to move a little bit. A little more. Make sure we have it. Come on. You see this tree, those limbs waggling up there? See that? That's showing you he's got a little more, buddy. Yeah, you're good. All right, that's probably good. Now, a lot of times I'll check that, that line for pretension, but I think he's going to be just fine. Anyhow, the fact that the tree also has sideways going that way, not towards the house, helps me make this fall a lot with a lot more confidence. This is Brad for pair. They are poorly, poorly hinging wood. Let's stand back. I'm gonna call for a little bit of pull. A little bit of pull. Go ahead, and take it. It's all you. Go. Go. When you see all these fibers here, the big whiskery fibers on both the stump and the trunk of this tree, 
that shows there's holding ability. Now, interesting for those who are uh, hinge geeks, right? This is dead center of the tree. Uh, and so I went almost 50% of the way through, but by the time I make my back cut now, this hinge is comprising the full length of this tree. I don't want this hinge up here in some smaller wood. I want the full length of the tree, and that is way more than 10%. That's like three and a half inches. That's probably a third of the way or close to a third of the way through this trunk. Now you see all these fibers, come on, bring, bring that camera down a little bit lower here. See this, these front hinge fibers here, they're all flat. That shows no holding control. Why is that? Because they were being compressed. The front of the hinge actually is in compression when it's getting pulled over. So they had very little holding ability, but these big whiskers on the backside showed how much hold, hold, holding ability we had. And, and th that's part of the beauty of the, of the fat hinge. Now I can use a scissor wheel in the front and give the front hinge, these front hinge fibers a little more flexibility. We would, if I use the scissor wheel, if I opened up the height of the hinge fibers in the front, we would be getting even more pull control out of these front fibers, but we didn't need it. Again, again, this is crucial. It's a game changer when you have enough power to pull with the skid loader. It's a real game changer in what the flexibility allows you when cutting these trees over. And I'm just 100%, there's no question, this tree was not even a question in my mind. We had it the whole way. And having that pretension, I cut the back cut up till it looked like, like the, 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 uh, this, this curve it was starting to open up just a hair. I said, oh, we got that. And I, you know, I just knew the fact that the pull line doubled and the skid loader pulling, we had plenty of power. So I like to cut trees, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. We got trees to pull off the house. We had a big storm here yesterday. So still plenty of work to do. Thanks for watching.